What's going on? Welcome to Revive Wednesday Bible Study. Have you ever wondered about the significance or the value of God's Word? Well, if you have, tonight's Bible study is for you. But before we get into it, let's pray together. Oh God, our provider, we're so thankful to you for all of your tremendous blessings. We thank you, God, for your goodness, your mercy, your love. We thank you for what you've done for us through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Savior and Lord. We thank you for the leadership of your Holy Spirit. We pray over this worship experience that it may be everything that you desire it to be. We lift everyone who is participating in tonight's Bible study. We pray that we will get out of it everything that you desire for us to extract from this time together. Please go with us right now and keep us strengthening us in Jesus' name. We do ask it all. We all say, Amen. Listen, we are so appreciative to you for welcoming us into your hearts as well as into your homes. For those of you who are watching by way of Facebook, I want you to go ahead and click the share button. Yep, just go ahead right there. Tap that share button and uh, go ahead and post. And uh, that way we can continue to get the word out to those who are following you on Facebook, who are friends with you on Facebook. For those of you who are watching us by way of YouTube, what we want you to do is simply subscribe. Yep, that's it. Just subscribe. And uh, you do that, just hit that, yeah, that notification bell. That it, there it is. All right. That's it. You're subscribed. So um, we look forward to uh, tonight's teaching. Tonight, we just want to talk from this thought, a word of advice a word of advice. I'm going to look at several verses of Scripture as we continue our latest teaching and preaching series that is entitled Priority Number One. Um, that is what, um, what our worship to God should be, should be our first priority. And so as we look at that, we're going to take a look at several verses of Scripture. Um, Psalms, uh, 119 verse 105. Yeah, there are 105 verses, really more than that to the 119th Psalm. I was going to look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, and then finally Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. And uh, again, simple thought, a word of advice. <laughs> now that's kind of funny for me because um, people who are close to me uh, they, they will tell you that uh, I have often stated, I don't tell grown people what to do. That is one of the axioms that I live by. I don't tell grown people what to do. However, I have found that it is good to share good advice. I have benefited from persons sharing with me bits of good advice. And I will tell you that one of the times in my life in which I certainly benefited from some advice was uh, my freshman year at the Florida State University in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, as you can imagine, you know, just with all of the busyness of uh, being a freshman on the campus of Florida State University, uh, studying was not a problem at all. Yeah, right. <laughs> And so as I got my bearings in regard to studying, one of the things that helped me was a bit of advice that I received from, uh, from a, uh, a student at Florida State University who was a part of our orientation. You know, they have upperclassmen that will lead orientation classes for incoming freshman classes. And so uh, one of the words of advice that I received as an incoming freshman. It helped me um, in my latter first semester, especially my second semester of my freshman year. And that was go to the library every day. And in orientation, this is kind of looked at the guy like, what? what are you talking about? But no, they were very serious. Go to the library every day. Even if you don't have anything due, 
Just go to the library every day. Make a habit of putting it into your schedule to go to the library every day for a couple of hours every day. And if you don't have anything due, you don't have any midterms, you don't have any papers due, just read, study something, go over your notes, but get in the habit. Make that a part of your routine. Make that a part of your daily regimen to go to the library every day. And so after kind of struggling a little bit my freshman year, I said, you know, I'm going to see if this bit of advice actually pans out. And it turns out it did. Going to the library every day. Robert Manning Strozier Library on the campus of Florida State University. Every day, well, except Fridays, but every day, I, and some Fridays, I would go to the library for at least a couple of hours. And even if I didn't have a test, even if I didn't have a paper due, I would just open up a book, read. I would do something in the library. And the main thing that that did was it provided me with stability. That word of advice and following through on it, taking it, taking heed to it, it provided me with stability in my academic life. Well, that brings me to uh, really our first point of power. Just like going to the library and opening up a book, whatever it was, and reading provided stability to my academic life, here's our first point of power. The Word of God provides us with spiritual stability, especially in seasons of uncertainty. The Word of God provides our lives in every aspect of our life. You name it. Your career, uh, the Word of God has something to say about it. Your family, the Word of God has something to say about it. If you stump your toe, yep, the Word of God has something to say about it. And now unto him who keeps us from falling. That's right. So whatever it is that you're going through, the word of God, it provides us with stability, especially in seasons of uncertainty. And there is nothing more uncertain than having to deal with darkness. Now I'll tell you, this is a period in which we are dealing with much in the way of darkness. I mean, all of the foolishness that we've had to put up with already this month, this is the first month of the year. And all of the craziness that we've had to deal with in regard to whether it's the pandemic, whether it's the pandemonium over people not accepting election results. Golly. I mean, whatever it is, it's just been uncertainty. These have been dark times. I mean, this will more than likely go down as the deadliest month throughout the course of the pandemic. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. I mean, it's proverbially a season of darkness. But the Word of God, it helps us and provides provides us with stability, even in a season of darkness, even in a season of uncertainty. Check what the Word of God says in the 119th Psalm, the 105th verse. Try saying that five times fast. Your Word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Now, the great thing about this 105th verse of the 119th Psalm is that you don't need light and you don't need lamps in the middle of the day. This is a psalm that speaks to what the Word does for us in periods of darkness. In the middle of the day, you don't need a lamp. But it's only when when life gets dark that you need that light. And God's word, it's a lamp for our feet. God's word provides us with a light for our paths. That takes us to our second point of power. No matter how dark life gets, please know that God never leaves us directionless. No, he doesn't. God never leaves us without direction. No matter where you are in your professional life, no matter where you are in your finances, no matter where you are in regard to your life as a student, no matter where you are in your marriage, as a parent, as a child, no matter where you are in life, period, God never leaves us without direction. You you will 
you will be amazed in seasons of darkness just how providentially encouraging the Word of God is. I, I love that. Providentially encouraging. And I attach that word providentially to encouraging, not just to sound cute, but with great reason. It's, it's because in studying for tonight's Bible study, one of the synonyms for providence is to be farsighted, to be farsighted. Now, I love that. I love that because yours truly is nearsighted. <laughs> I, I'm not talking about in life. I'm not talking about proverbially anymore. But really, um, in regard to um, optometry, my eyes, I'm nearsighted. And um, that's why many of you don't see me ever really wearing glasses. It's because I can see stuff close up. It's only when I'm um, having to see things from a distance, like if I'm in class, to put on glasses. Or if I'm driving at night, uh, and I'm trying to read street signs, I have to wear my glasses, or I have to depend on my GPS, a.k.a. Lady Tiffany. <laughs> Either way it goes. In order for me to be able to see at a distance, I have to have glasses because I am nearsighted. And so to learn that providence, that um, its connotation is farsightedness, I get excited about that because that's not something that I get to experience physically. But because of what God's word does for us, I can experience it spiritually. You can experience it spiritually, being providentially encouraged. That's what the word of God does for us. In other words, when we read the word of God, it helps us to see the big picture. It helps us to see what God is doing in our lives. It help us, helps us to understand, helps us to discern where God desires for us to be so that we can be in position for God to do in our lives what God has planned to do. And, and so the Word of God, it helps us to be providentially where God would like for us to be. It helps us to be on the path that God desires our lives to be on. Do you know how amazing that is? To know that you're in the right place at the right time? That is absolutely awesome. And that's what the Word of God does for us. That's why it's so providentially encouraging. But now here's the third point of power. The Word of God informs us of God's activity in previous periods of adversity. It does. It's a big old history book. That's what the Word of God is. It, it, it gives us these episodes in history. It tells us about these episodes in the history of God's people and how God has interacted, how God has swooped in to save the day, how God has led and guided and directed God's people to prevailing over whatever adversity the enemy had thrown at the people of God. So, that takes us to another verse of Scripture. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. Check out what the Word of God says. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. This is God speaking to Joshua. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, I know what you're doing. You're sitting there saying, uh-huh, yeah, that sounds good. Well, you got to know the context of the text. Joshua had just led the people of God to the very brink. They were right on the precipice of entering into the promised land. But here's the thing. Moses, Moses who had been guiding and leading and had been just that awesome servant of God who took the people of God out of Egyptian bondage, Moses was no longer on the scene. Moses was now resting with the Lord. He was gone. He departed this earthly existence. And here's Joshua, Moses' protege. And he is now with the task. He has now been given the responsibility of leading God's people. And he is succeeding perhaps the most awesome Old Testament leader that there is, Moses. 
And God gives him this word of encouragement. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Encouraging, encouraging words. And God did just that. Throughout Joshua's life as a leader, obstacle after obstacle, adversity after adversity, God blessed the people of God under Joshua's leadership to overcome. Even when they brought adversity over themselves at a little place called Ai, yeah, God still allowed them to overcome, even themselves. That's so awesome because even when we bring adversity into our own lives, we can count on God to allow us, to bless us, to overcome it. And that takes us to our fourth point of power. The history of God's interaction with humanity provides us with a deep well of encouragement. When you read the word of God, no matter where you open it, if you read it for long enough, and it won't take you very long, you will find that the word of God is a wellspring, provides us with a deep well of encouragement about what God has done in the past, which informs us of what God will do in our own lives. What God has done before, God will do again. No matter what it is that you're dealing with, you've got to know that. That if God did it in the past, God can, God can do it again. God can do it in your life. So the Word of God, it provides us with a wellspring, with a deep well of encouragement for our lives. A well that really never runs dry. No matter how discouraged we become, no matter how down we get, the Word of God will speak to us and it will encourage us. The Word of God will speak to us and the Word of God will help us to get through whatever it is that we are going through. And that takes us to our fifth point of power. The Word of God gives us real hope for the future. Real hope for the future. Check out what the Word of God says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That's encouraging. That, that, that's why today's message is entitled The Word of Advice. It's because the Word of God, it inspires, it encourages, it lifts. And that's what we need in times like this, more than ever in our lives, more than ever in my own life. I need this kind of encouragement in regard to just what we're dealing with, just the historic proportion of the absurdity and the seriousness of what we've had to deal with just this month. We need the Word of God to provide us with hope, real I know, I know that this season, it feels like it's never going to come to an end. But there is a future for us beyond COVID-19. Believe you me, it may not feel like it, may not seem like it, but there is a future for us beyond this pandemic. We've got to believe that. We've got to hold on to that. We've got to stay disciplined in the midst of all of this, remembering that disciple is the root word of discipline. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, it means you got some built-in discipline, so exercise it during this season. It's not a time to be reckless. It's not a time to say, I'm over it, and just got to do whatever it is that we're big, bad, and bold enough to do. No, this is a season for us to trust God, recognizing that there is a great light at the end of this dark tunnel, recognizing that there is a future beyond COVID-19. And that's not all. Here's our last point of power. Please get this. We've got to also know, and this is something that the Word of God will help us to rec recognize, it is that the ramifications of our, of our faith, they're not just temporary, but they impact us for eternity. 
the ramifications of our faith, they're not temporary. They impact us. They have an eternal. They impact us for all of eternity. And so when we talk about there being a future beyond COVID-19, that, that's encouraging. That's encouraging because it helps us to know that, that that is encouragement, not just for now, but that's an encouragement for forever. For those loved ones that have left this, this earthly existence due to COVID-19, this is a powerful word of encouragement that there is a future beyond COVID-19. There is a future for us beyond the grave. There's a future for us beyond, beyond our departure from this earthly existence. And our faith, it has those kinds of ramifications, not just temporary, not just temporary ramifications, but eternal ramifications. That that's why, that's why we have to make sure that we never reduce God's plans for our lives to, to that which is dealing with or pertains to the right here and right now. That's why we can never reduce God's plans for our lives to material possessions or to money or to houses, cars, and clothes. No, you cannot reduce God's plans for your life to those kinds of things. Remember, those kinds of things are temporary. Mm -mm. No, rather, we've got to focus our attention on that which is eternal. You got to focus your attention. In fact, just make it real practical. You got to focus your attention on how you can serve God in a way that is going to be helpful to the people that you come into contact with, even in this season. Whether it is by way of um, supporting a food pantry, whether it's by way of supporting the food ministry here, whether it's simply providing a word of encouragement to a friend or a colleague who's having a rough day, especially that colleague that thinks that you don't like them. Yeah, providing them with a word of encouragement, whether it is praying for somebody who is a, a church member who is dealing with just something really serious, some serious adversity. Th those are things that have eternal impact. Wh whether it's giving to somebody in need, not, not just loaning, but giving you know, to somebody who's really in need. Those are things that have an eternal impact. Please, please, please understand that we, we, we've got to develop a habit, just like I had to, to develop a habit at the Robert Manning Stroger Library at Florida State, just like I had to develop a habit of going to the library every day and reading something. We've got to develop a habit every day of not reading something, but of reading the thing, the word of God that brings encouragement into our lives, especially at those times in which we need encouragement the most. That, that's, that's understanding our value within the scope of eternity. It's understanding our need for reading, studying, engaging, in the word of God. That has eternal ramifications for us. Our grandparents used to just say it like this, life is filled with swift transitions. Nothing of this earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. When you read the Word of God, when you make that a part of your daily regimen, when you make that a part of your daily routine, you are having an interaction with something that has eternal ramifications for your life. When you build it into your schedule to spend time with the Word of God, you are holding to God's unchanging hand. Let's pray about it. Oh God, our provider, our savior, our redeemer, we thank you for all of your tremendous blessings. We thank you for 
the salvific act that you brought to humanity by way of the life, death, and resurrection of Christ Jesus. We thank you, God, for the leadership of your Holy Spirit who brings illumination to your word. We pray, God, that we will understand the value of your word, the importance of your word, to the point that we build time into our lives on a daily basis to engage with your word. We love you. We lift you. We thank you for the power of your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you're watching tonight, you don't have a connection to God that goes through Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, it's not complex. It's not complicated. As a matter of fact, one of the very simple ways that you can do it is by repeating after me what we call the prayer of salvation. If you don't have a connection to God that goes through Jesus Christ, I pray that you allow me to lead you right now in this prayer of salvation. Come on and pray with me. Oh God, you are my redeemer. I admit that I am a sinner. And so I thank you for Jesus on the cross. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the grave. And because of what you have done, I am saved for now and forever. Amen and amen. You pray that prayer with sincerity. It's true. You're saved for now and forever. Amen and amen. All we need for you to do is to let us know about your decision. And it's very easy to let us know. Simply text the word friend to the number that you see on the screen. 404-637-2223. Text friend to that number. And I tell you, we don't have anything better to do than to celebrate what God is doing in your life. But you say, Torn, I have a connection to God that goes through Jesus Christ, but I'm not connected to a ministry. And I like what friendship is doing. I like what you guys are doing. I like your approach to being community oriented. I like your approach to practical and passionate teaching. And I want to know how I can be down. How can I be a part? Well, it's simple. Again, simply text the word friend to the number that you see on the screen. 404-637-2223. And I'll say to you also, we have nothing better to do than to celebrate what God is doing in your life. For those of you who have been so committed to worshiping God through giving, whether it has been by way of your support of our food ministry, and we, we ask if you have not supported our food ministry, hey, there's no time like the present. The information is on the screen. We need those uh, non-perishables, those shelf-secure items, canned goods. Go ahead, support our food ministry. Support our effort to meet the needs of those who are in need in our community. Our food ministry, they minister to the needy, not to the greedy. And so we, we ask for your support for our food ministry. Well, we also praise God for those of you who have been continuing to worship God through your giving from a financial perspective. We praise God for you, and I know that we're excited about this Sunday. We have another sacrificial Sunday. I'm excited about it. And, um, and as we prepare for sacrificial Sunday, we know it is not difficult. It's not a big task. What it is, is a, it's an important thing that we do, and it's very, very simple. We simply go to God in prayer, and we ask God to lead us by way of the Holy Spirit in regard to what God would have us to give on a sacrificial Sunday. We have a biblical prescription for our tithing. But when it comes to sacrificial giving, we're to pray and ask God to lead us by way of the Holy Spirit. Whatever the Spirit of God leads us to give, that's what we give. It's just that simple. And that even goes beyond monetary giving. 
It has to do with every aspect of our lives, whether it is being more studious, whether it is spending more time in the Word, whether it is being more committed as a worshiper, even in this virtual season. could be spending time with your wife, spending time with your husband. But whatever it is, ask God to lead you and guide you by way of the Spirit. Whatever the Spirit leads you to give, that's what you give. Just that simple. So we praise God for those of you who have been continuing to give. We are convicted about this, that biblical giving honors God, and God honors our biblical giving. In fact, with that, let's go to our prayerful affirmation. Raise those right hands with me. Repeat after me. In obedience to your word, I offer my gift. By faith, I receive all that you have for me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Listen, we look forward to all that the Lord has in store for us. Um, please be with us this Sunday. I know you're going to be with us. So tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend to be with us this Sunday, 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., 11 a.m. 8, 9.30, 11 a.m., all times Eastern Standard. As we continue, really as we close out this current message series, priority number one, not three, four, five, or 50, but our worship to God is priority number one. Now for the blessing. May the love of God, sweet peace of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide within us all. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. And all of God's children say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God keep you until we meet again. Peace and love. This is Torin Daly signing off of our Revive Wednesday Bible study streaming experience. Our worship to God. Priority number one. Number one. We'll see you this Sunday. Here is this week's news. In addition to giving electronically through the giving kiosk, the church website, or through your personal online banking system, Friendship also offers a text giving option. Simply text your text giving amount to 404-948-5006. Tithes and offerings can also be mailed or brought to the church during the new office hours, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 1.30 p.m and 3 p.m. until 5 p.m. Streaming worship times are 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11 a.m. These dynamic experiences are available on YouTube, Facebook, as well as the call-in line. Revive Wednesday is back. We look forward to sharing with you at our Revive Wednesday worship streaming experiences at 7 p.m. This is a practical and passionate study of God's Word. Join us for prayer on Mondays at 7 a.m. To those of you joining us by way of YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Select the bell so that you will be notified when Friendship is streaming on YouTube. If you are joining us by way of Facebook, we invite you to like us, follow us, and host a watch party to help us get the good news out about Jesus Christ. Sacrificial Sunday, January 31st, 2021. Start preparing and planning for your sacrifice. Check the website and weekly email for live group material. The church is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday to receive donations of non-perishable items and canned goods. For more information and for the latest updates and details, be sure to visit myfriendshipcommunity.com, join the Friendship Weekly email blast, or contact the church office. Be sure to follow us, like us, and subscribe to stay connected to Friendship Community Church where friendship is more than a word and Christ is the head. <laughs>